Hello, Edward. Thank you for joining us today. Would you like to start by telling everybody what your EDS diagnosis is? Yeah, of course. Um, so I have a genetic diagnosis for kyphoscoliotic Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, um, which is uh, largely a, a connective tissue um, disorder um, that affects um, most of my body in, in lots of different ways, um, with some of the main areas being my skin um, and my eyes and kind of healing. Um, it's a it's a broad um, it's a broad disorder that affects lots of different um, processes with with my life and my body. And just for the audience to say that it's the plod one type of kyphoscoliotic Ehlers Danlos, just for, for yes. people with the same in in the audience. And tell me, sure. what did it mean to you to actually have a name given to the condition to have this diagnosis made? Well, it was always a bit confounding, really, why I healed so differently from especially my brother, um, who doesn't have the diagnosis. And when I was very little, I used to get um, very obvious, very dark bruising, um, and I used to cut very easily and heal badly. Um, and it was often kind of met with... Um, with doctors saying that I had um, kind of funny skin um, when I was little and and saying that I, I um, was healing in a slightly strange way, um, but it was never really given a lot of a lot of notice. Um, and I originally grew up in New Zealand um, and I moved over to the UK when I was seven. And when I started um, kind of going through um, puberty especially, I noticed that when my joints began growing, um, I would get very dark bruising around my elbows um, and uh, my knees. Um, and when I started getting bruising like that was when I started um, going and seeing genetic experts to try and work out what the problem was, because it was obvious that there was a, a condition of some sort. Um, and when we finally found out that there was a genetic disorder um, that was affecting my skin and my joints, it made so much sense. Um, because for, for years, I hadn't been given any kind of real solid um, diagnoses or um, any kind of expertise in, in the specific area that was affecting me. Um, but it made a lot of sense. Um, and it meant that we could move forwards with any kind of treatment um, and sort of physiotherapy and that kind of thing. Yes. And I was you've had some very significant surgery, health problems and then surgery. I wondered if you'd like to tell everybody about your experience with having achalasia and the treatment that you needed to have for that. So my my achalasia, um, I first started noticing uh, just before I went into my A-level studies. Um when I began uh, realizing that eating was becoming very painful, um, and I also was beginning to have um, kind of uh, random chest muscle spasming pains. Um, and this continued to become worse throughout my A-levels um, until we realized that it was going to really become a problem. And the amount of effort that we were putting into trying to diagnose what the problem was really started to ramp up with the the, the huge assistance of the EDS team in Sheffield um, and with with many meetings with um with Dr Sobi um, and the rest of the EDS team we all we realized that there was um the condition of achalasia um so we um, began trying to find a way to to treat this um, through a, an invasive um, surgery that I had at Sheffield to open up um, open up my gullet to try and um, to try and open open up the, the structure um, that was stopping me being able to eat properly. Um, so that was one of the, the that was the largest surgery that I've had that's been in relation to my EDS. Um, as well as other other surgeries, um, often on my back, um, where I, I regularly suffer from boils um, that sometimes need to be removed. 
Um, and there was there was another surgery that I had a couple of years earlier on my back um, to have one of them removed as well. So it isn't it isn't uncommon that um, my condition can lead to needing some kind of surgical um, intervention, um, especially with my achalasia. Yes, and I think perhaps we should say a little bit around that, Edward, with just the preparation for you for this surgery for the stricture you were at a situation where you couldn't actually even swallow fluids without very severe pain i, I know you've been always yes. been very brave about it but you had lost a tremendous amount of weight and and even liquids were becoming impossible to swallow and yes um, yes things had to be all very carefully set up for your surgery because of the potential risks yes um, yeah, there was there was a, a large amount of of um, planning and investigation that went into how we should best um, conduct that. We've had many meetings. <laughs> yeah, and we were all very very relieved and 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 pleased that it's that it settled things down for you. Yes. And um, now you've just freshly finished your A level exams. Would you would you have any any advice um, for others keeping up academic? achievements as you have managed to do whilst battling with a rare disease yeah completely um it's a very it's it's a very strange position to find yourself in because everybody that's going through the same academic movements as you especially with um a section of your career like a levels but no, you will. It's it's very rare that you will meet somebody that's going through the exact same situation as you, especially when it's a genetic disorder like KDS. And the the biggest thing that um, I found was able to help was being honest with my teachers and my student, my my, my other um, peer students about why I was maybe missing lessons and if there was any assistance that I needed. Because the amount of help that you're able to get from people when you're honest and clear about what the issue is, um, it makes such a difference compared to if you try to kind of minimize the amount that other people know about your condition um, or, and to kind of allow yourself to not feel embarrassed. Because there isn't, there's nothing embarrassing about having a disorder. It's, it's nobody's fault. Um, but... It's, it, it, it really surprised me the amount that everybody was able to help, even if people didn't fully understand. Um, but I, yeah, I think my biggest piece of advice is just to be honest, um, because there's a lot of support that you may not know is, is able to be given to you, especially in schools. Lovely. Thank you, Edward. That's been a really powerful testimony. And thank you for doing this for us. I'm sure others will really benefit it's been from a pleasure. it. And of course, very good luck for those A-level results, which are going to be coming to you soon. Thank you very much. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Sobey.